Tonight, um, we're going to look at um, a little bit, of, just a little bit of Elijah, and we're going to tie it into what we're talking about um, on Sunday about Pentecost and what's happening about the Holy Spirit. In First Kings. Hmm. Let's go to chapter 18. Then. I'm going to give the short version of it. We're not going to read all of it. We're going to trust the Lord. We'll bring it back to our remembrance. Amen? Amen. Amen. Holy Spirit will bring back to your remembrance whatsoever you have already read. So if you ain't read it, oh man, it's going to be a long night for you. <laughs> <laughs> Elijah was a famous prophet of the Lord. And he got involved in a whole bunch of things. And he was concerned about the nation. He spoke to kings and directed. But one thing I want to point out to you is that he, he had a flair for the exciting. <laughs> he he was a, he loved fire. <laughs> he was the opposite of the prophet Smokey the Bear. <laughs> Smokey would say, well, only we can prevent forest fires. Elijah liked to start them. <laughs> he loved some fire. In chapter 18, you read um, about a famous place called Mount Carmel. And a big battle that took place there. Where Elijah asked the question, how long are we going to be hauled between two opinions? And that's woven throughout the scriptures. Even in Revelation, he said, I'd rather you be hot or cold. Right? He said, lukewarm, hanging in the middle. He said, that just makes me sick. He said, I'll spew you out of my mouth. Spit you out. So he likes you to make a decision. Joshua said, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Mm -hmm. And so in 1 Kings 18, um, he called this showdown. Yes. And he said, you get all your prophets. I'll stand over here. He said, all the prophets of Baal, we're going we're gonna to settle this thing once and for all. Mm -hmm. And if you look at verse 24, he says, and you call ye upon the name of your gods, mm -hmm. and I will call upon the name of the Lord. Mm -hmm. And he said, the God that answereth by fire, mm -hmm. let him be God. Ooh. And all the people answered and said, it is well spoken. Now, he could have said all kinds of things. But he said, the God that answered it by fire. Elijah loved him some fire. Ah, he, lo he was love. He was for the flare, the dramatic stuff. He wanted it to happen. He wanted to, oof. He didn't want there to be no doubt that God was there. He had a flare for the excitement. And that's not the only place he did it, but um, 24 says that, and, and then if you read down uh, to verse 38, you know all the stuff that happened. They, they did their thing. He let them choose. He, he took what was left over. Uh, he poured water all over his to make it tougher, you know, and, and they jumping up and down. They cutting themselves and all that kind of stuff. Please notice that because Satan always is into mutilation. He is. That's one of his things. He wants you to hurt yourself. Uh, and so they went through all this kind of stuff and nothing happened to them. Elijah even making fun of them. Yeah. You know, scream a little bit louder. Maybe he on the toilet, you know. <laughs> Maybe his cell phone is out of service, you know. You know, scream a little louder. But then it says that um, Elijah poured water on his. Yeah. You know, 
he, he, oh, what are you doing? Trying to put a, a flair for the dramatic. He, he, just, he, he just wanted to show off. He wanted to show off. Look, not only is, is this going to happen, but I'm going to pour water over there. And so the water went all over the altar and filled up the, the trenches around it. He, I mean, he bad. He's going to put on a show here at Mount Carmel, right? But verse 38 says, Then the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the burnt, off, burnt sacrifice. Right? And the wood. See, not only did it burn up the sacrifice, it burned up the wood. Okay? Burned up the wood and the stones. He going over and above and beyond the call of duty. He burned up everything. He in the dust and licked up the water that was in the tree. I mean, Elijah was a dude, and we did. He wanted you to know that God is in the house. He had a flair for the dramatic, and, 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 and that was his life. That wasn't the only time he did that. If you were to go over to Second Kings chapter one, and if you read verses one through thirteen, Second Kings chapter one. And if you read verses 1 through 13, you'll find that uh, Ahab has sent some men to talk to Elijah and, and tell Elijah, come back here because I want, I want to deal with you. Come on back here. And he sent a group of men and they came up to Elijah and began to talk to him. And Elijah said, look, if I be a man of God, let fire come down from heaven. And, and fire came down. Whoosh. And burn them up. Burn them all up. Elijah loved to play with some fire. He, he loved him some fire. And you know, for him, if, if God was going to show who he was, there had to be a big fire. So he helps in a second group. They came. You read that in first 13 verses. They came, and, and he sits there, and he says the same thing. And the fire from heaven came down. Fire came down. Killed them too. Ahab sends a third group. The third group gets there. And that third dude, the leader, must have been named Timothy. <laughs> he must have been one of them dudes who learned from other people's mistakes. He got it. He said... He said, come on, Mr. Elijah, look, I'm coming here. This is my job. I got to come here. Please have mercy on me. I saw what happened to the first group. I saw what happened to I'm just doing my job. Please. Right? Have mercy on me. You know, because well, he learned from the other guys. Hey. Now, if you keep going in Second Kings, you read that even when Elijah left, it says that the, the, the chariots of God came and the fire and, and they picked him up and, and, and he went up to glory in the chariots of fire. Elijah had a flair about him. He, woo, you knew when he was around something spectacular was about to happen. And so he walked that way. He knew God from that point of view, from the point of the spectacular. He liked fire. All right? Now go back to 1 Kings. Let's go to chapter 19. So I'm just reading. And I thought, wow. Okay, we'll start reading here. So after Elijah shows the prophets of Baal off, he tells his men to take them and, you know, to gather them all together and make sure that not one of them escapes. And they killed all those false prophets. All of them. Why? Because when you're going to take care of the bad guys, you got to take care of all of them. You don't want nobody escaping. That's what he told them when they went into the promised land. They killed everybody. Everybody. So that's what he did. He said, look, uh, uh, that's um, 1 Kings 18, 4, that Elijah said to them, take the prophets of Baal. So let not one of them escape. And they took them, and Elisha 
uh, brought them down to the brook Kishon and they slew them. Okay? So all this took place. Now, look at chapter 19. So Ahab, who's the king, told Jezebel, who's the queen, he says, all that Elijah had done, and with all how he had slain all the prophets with the sword. Then Jezebel sent a messenger unto Elijah, saying, So let the gods do to me, and more also, if I make my, thy life as the life of one of them by tomorrow about this time. So, translation. Jezebel said, Ooh, I'm going to kill you. <laughs> and I just want you to understand. I ain't going to kill you one day. You're going to be gone within 24 hours. Because I'm coming after you. Now this is Elijah, the guy who just stood up against all these false prophets. And had a showdown. He just showed the power of God in one of the most magnificent ways possible. He proved that he was a man of God. Until Jezebel said, I'm coming to get you. And all of a sudden, he went, stage left. <laughs> I'm out of here. And the Bible says, and when he saw that, he, uh, he arose and, and went for his life. He ran for his life and came to Beersheba, which belonged to Judah, and, and let his, left his servant there. He ran. This guy who just stood up against all those false prophets. This guy who's standing. Listen, this is why you always got to remember and stay in the spirit. Mm -hmm. Come on, yeah. You cannot touch the spirit. You must be filled with the spirit yes. and walk in the spirit, yes. submit it to the spirit 24-7. Yes. Because if you don't, this is what stuff kind of happens. Yes. See, you will have these great big victories in your life when you're walking in the spirit. But the moment you let your guard down, you'll find yourself running. Come on now. From the enemy. The one that you just stood up against. Come on now. So the woman says, I'm coming to get you. He's running. Let's keep on reading. He says, but for, verse 4 says, but he himself, when a day is joined. No, oh, go back to verse 3. Notice he says he left his servant there. Mm -hmm. Later on, he's going to try to get rid of his servant, but his servant ain't going to let him go. Mm -hmm. But right here, he left his servant. Mm -hmm. Okay. Verse 4 says, but he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness, look, and came and sat under a juniper tree and requested for himself that he might die. Just the same guy who just stood up. There's so go. Who just stood up against all the prophets of Baal. Same guy. What I want you to understand is that God uses human beings. None of them are perfect. Okay? None of them are perfect. Okay? You say, why don't God make some perfect people? All he has to work with is un imperfect people. He's strong, tough, all this stuff. They don't know he's running. And not only is he running, he said, I want to die. This is him who just told everybody else, how long will you be hot between two opinions? Amen. This is the same one who stood up there laughing at the devil and his people. Mm -hmm. Now he wants to die. Mm -hmm. I said, now he wants to die. Mm -hmm. Let me keep reading because there's, there's a message in here tonight. Mm -hmm. Then he wants to, he, he wants to, he wants to, to die. Mm -hmm. He said, is it enough, O oh Lord, now? Take, take away my life. For I am not better than my father's. Yeah, I was willing to stand up against all them false prophets, but this woman coming after me now, boy, you know how they are. Sugar, sugar and spice and everything nice on my foot. Uh, I, you ever think about John the Baptist? Yeah. yeah. And he came in his, oh my goodness, they connected. Yeah, yeah. Remember how he died? Yeah. The king's wife. Yeah, that's right. Look, look, look. Now, y'all got to think this through. They're having a big old party. Mm -hmm. The king's daughter dances before the king. Mm -hmm. And the Bible says she pleased him. Mm -hmm. He said, 
open his mouth like we do. I give you anything you want up to half of my kingdom. She had talked, she talked with her mom. This is what her mom said. Give me John the Baptist's head on a charger. Mm -hmm. Now stop and think about that. How do you go from to give me his head on a charger? How, how do you do that? You know, but, but see, that shows you the wickedness that people have. It, it shows you the evil that can be in the heart of human beings. You wouldn't even think a woman would say that. A woman would go, ew. No, she asked the boy. And she asked for his head on a charger. So, uh, Jezebel's chasing him, and he's running. Because he believes her. But he believes her more than he believes God. Mm. Mm. Come on now. Yeah, yeah. See, he believed God for the big thing, the big showdown, but not God for this woman who's coming at him. I keep on reading because there's a, there's, a, there's a message. Yeah. Yeah. It says, but he said uh, himself a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat on a juniper tree and he, he requested for himself. He prayed that he might die. He said, it is enough, O Lord. Take away my life, for I am not better than my father. Verse 5 says, and as he laid and slept under a juniper tree, behold, an angel touched him and said unto him, Arise and eat. And he looked, and behold, there was a cake baking on the coals and a cruise of water at his head. And he did eat and drink and laid himself down again. So he woke up long enough to stuff his face. <laughs> then he went back to sleep. <laughs> Verse 7 says, And the angel of the Lord came again the second time and touched him and said, Arise and eat, because the journey is too great for thee. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Your journey is too great for thee. Mm -hmm. you got to take care of yourself in order to make the journey that God has laid out for you. Mm -hmm. yeah. Verse 8 says, And he rose, and he did eat and drink. Look, and he went in the strength of that meat how long? 40 days and 40 nights unto Horeb, the Mount of God. Unto Horeb, the Mount of God. So he, he's running from Jezebel. He goes running all the way for 40 days and 40. He goes running to Horeb the Mount of God. Sure. Now you might know Horeb mm -hmm. as Mount Sinai. Mm -hmm. yeah. The Mount of God. Wow. He's running to the Mount of God. Mm -hmm. He's afraid. Mm -hmm. He's scared to death, literally. Mm -hmm. He's running for his life and he runs to the Mount of God. Mm -hmm. Now, that sounds good, but let's keep reading. To the mount of God, verse 9 says, And he came thither into a cave, and he lodged there, and behold, the word of the Lord came to him. And he said unto him, What doest thou here, Elijah? Oh. Why are you here? Why? Are you here? Now, it seems like a good place to be. The Mount of the Lord. Why are you here? So apparently he's not there because God told him to go there. Okay? He said, why are you here? What doest thou here, Elijah? Verse 10. And he said, I have been very jealous for the Lord God of hosts, for the children of Israel have forsaken thy covenant, thrown down thine altars, and slain thy prophets with the sword. And I, even I, only am left. And they seek my life to take it away. Come on, Lord. Come on, Lord. 
You see what happens when fear takes over? It messes up your sight. Yeah. He thinks he's the only one left serving the Lord. Okay. He's also viewing this woman who's out to kill him in the same way that the nation of Israel was viewing Goliath when he was talking trash. Yeah. In other words, he's looking at her instead of God. <coughs> they were looking at Goliath instead of God. He's running because that's what he that's what has got him to go to the place that he's going to. He said, go forth and stand up on the mount before the Lord. And behold, the Lord, look, listen. And behold, the Lord passed by and a great strong wind rent the mountains. A great strong wind rent the mountains. By the way, that's what the word spirit means. It's the same idea. Breath. Wind. The wind blew and it what? It rent the mountain. So this was a strong wind, wasn't it? Okay. To to rend a mountain, to break a mountain up, that's a wind. Do you think that's flareful enough for Elijah? Remember Elijah, he likes to flare. Yeah. He likes the dramatic, right? He likes the fire. He likes to see the dramatic. Yeah. See, at the Mount of God, that's where the dramatic first took place. Okay. Remember? Remember the mountaintop was a fire and it was rumbling and roaring and the voice of God? I mean, if you want to see dramatic, it was so dramatic that the Israelites said, look, we scared. We don't want to be here. You go up and talk to God. This is too much for us. This is too much flair for us. So when trouble happens, what does Elijah do? He runs to the place where the flare is. Mm -hmm. And so God meets him with some flare. Okay? The wind blew. Right? And it, and it rent the mountains. That's flare. This is in breaking in pieces the rocks before the Lord. Look, but the Lord was not in the wind. The flare was there. The wind was there. But God wasn't in it. God wasn't in it. So, and after the wind, it says an earthquake. Is that flareful enough for you? There was an earthquake shaking and trembling and all this stuff going on. There's an earthquake. That's flare, ain't it? That's flare. It says, but the Lord, it says, there was an earthquake and fire. Oh, this is, it was an earthquake and fire. Woo, oh. Elijah probably going, on. all right, now we're here, baby. God is showing up now, baby. Woo, there's an earthquake and fire. This, this is what he's looking for. Oh, he, he home now. He in his familiar territory now. There's an earthquake and fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. Now listen. And after the fire, a still small voice. After the fire, a still small voice. 13 says, and it was so when Elijah heard it, that he wrapped his face in his mouth. And he went out and stood in the entry of the cave. And behold, there came a voice unto him and said, What doest thou here, Elijah? Mm -hmm. I was reading through that and I said, reading through that, I thought, man, this don't make. Then I thought about what we said Sunday. And I thought about charismatics and the costumes. And I thought about the things that always have to happen 
in order for God to be there. Mm -hmm. I thought about all the noise that has to go on. The loud shouting and the loud music. I boom, 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 boom. Mm -hmm. I thought about all the screaming and the running in order for it to be said that God is there. Well, well, well. And I looked at this. He was running to find comfort in what he was familiar with, what he was into. Fire. Noise. Yet when God spoke, he spoke to him in a still small voice. And in that still small voice, he was just as powerful as he had been when fire came down and consumed the altar and licked up the water and did all that had happened before. Just like when he had yelled for the fire to come down and destroy those people, he was the same God in the still small voice. Yes. The same God. We can't get caught up in the, all the externals. Mm -hmm. Whether he screams or whether he whispers, mm -hmm. he's still God. Amen. Amen. Elijah did all that running and all that running to find deliverance at the, at the, the mount of God because he knew that God had showed up powerfully there at that place. When Jezebel first said, I'm coming to kill you, if he had said, Lord, he would have spoken a still, small voice and delivered him just as much yeah. right then. Come on now. He didn't need to do all this running. Mm -hmm. He didn't need to run and, and say, kill me now. He didn't need, any, none of that needed to happen. Mm -hmm. Because God was the same God oh. 40 days ago oh. back at Mount Carmel when Jezebel decided to make her move, God was just as strong there as he was up uh -huh. on my, Mount Sinai. Come on, Come on, Come on, You hear what we're saying tonight? Yes. He wasn't in all the noise. We, as the people of God, have got to come to a place to where we understand that God can move any way he wants to. Come on now. He can do without us saying a word. He even can answer prayer without us praying. Because he already knows what's in our hearts. He already needs what we need. What, what he knows what we need. See, all this stuff that we build up, Elijah was just like that. I just think, why, is, why are you seeing this? He said, because with all this stuff that people think has to happen, none of it has to happen mm -hmm. in order for me to be God. Ooh. If it does, that's good. No problem. But don't have to. Mm -hmm. Elijah should have known best. Mm -hmm. But his fears got the best of him. See, that's what we do. When things are going bad, we go back to what we remember. Mm -hmm. And we go back and we say, we got to line everything up just the right way in order for God to do it. God said, no, none of that has to happen. Mm -hmm. Anyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. Come on now. Mm -hmm. All Elijah would have had to do is say, Lord, I'm yours. Amen. He could have saved himself all that running. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he could have saved himself all that stuff mm -hmm. because God was able right where he was. Yeah. That is right so good. where he was. Mm -hmm. He had to do nothing. He had to run, do any of that kind of stuff. I'm here right where you're at. Mm -hmm. And so we want to come to that place in our own lives to where we know that he's a right now God. Mm -hmm. yeah. <coughs> he's a right now God. He's a right here where I'm at, God. Oh, don't don't get me wrong. There are places that you ought to be. 
there were appointed times and and uh, appointed times uh, and places. Uh, Sunday, you ought to be in church. You ought to go to Bible study. You ought to go to prayer meeting. But in between all that, the same God that you're going to meet at those places will meet you wherever you're at. Amen. And he's able to do whatever is necessary right where you're at. Amen. 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 That's part of what we're going to try to roll into uh, on Sundays as we continue to talk. Remember we said that uh, the dunamis is the ability yes. or the capability yes. for whatever is needed at that moment. Yeah, yeah. Wherever is needed yes. at that moment. Yes. You're not going nowhere else. Mm -hmm. yeah. He's still God. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. So that's all I want to share tonight. This is a short one. And so uh, let's pray and, 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 and grab hold to what God is saying. God, we want to uh, tell you right now how much we appreciate you and how much you're, you're showing us as we read from Genesis through Revelation, how you're showing us uh, and, and allowing us to learn not only from our own stuff, but from other people's stuff. We said on Sunday, irregardless of experiences, whether they were good or whether they were bad, we don't want experiences to overrule what your word says. We've enjoyed certain things in certain places. But that don't mean it's the only place it can happen. We've enjoyed certain things in certain ways. Doesn't mean that's the only way it can, it can happen. Certain formulas that we've, we've put together about we have to this and do this and not three times, you know, no. None of that is necessary. You're able, Lord. You are able, irregardless. And Father, help us to understand that, that what, what fear does to us. He said, you have not given us the spirit of fear, but a power and a love and a sound mind. Fear messes us up. Fear just warps the way we think. It, it, it warps what we believe even about you. So help us to walk in faith, not in fear. Teach us, Lord, that we don't have to follow other, just what everybody else is doing. We can walk in the peace that you give, give us as we get to know you and trust in you. We don't have to follow these, these formulas. It isn't about a special location. Although certain things happen. But Lord, you are all powerful. Time and space don't affect you. Don't affect you. Even Lord, in the in in the um, the healing of our bodies, we always talking earlier about in prayer, you can you can uh, give new lungs. Brand new lungs. You can change out our hearts without missing a beat. You can change everything. We need to stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. So Father, all the things that we've been praying about, we're still believing you for. We're believing you, Lord, that you're able to Heal Sister Paula. Uh, make everything in her right. All of us who've been having these, these reoccurring things, you're, you're able to, to stop that. We cease and desist order on that now. Don't care about, they say, well, you know, it takes this and it takes that. And no, you don't have to take nothing. So we believe to see the salvation of the Lord in the land of the living. We believe to see it now. Yes. We can pray for the state in which we live. Everybody talking about what a dry state this is. 
about how you know everybody in this state is so up on this stuff. Oh, we're here for a reason. Come on, man. We're believing to see a spiritual revival, renewal, a a born again move of God right here in the state of Utah. Mm -hmm. And where people go away from confidence in their organization to a true trust in the living God. Oh, oh, oh. That's what we decree for the state of Utah. Yes, yes. And all the craziness that's going on in this nation, all it's doing is stirring up people's heart to be sensitive and longing for God. Because we're seeing that nothing else will do. So we decree Jesus Christ in 2024. In America. And around the world. So we thank you, Lord, tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.